This is John Johnson for KPBX FM, and welcome to Johnson's Improbable History of Pop. The Doobie Brothers grew out of a San Francisco Bay Area band named HUD, which broke up in 1969. They started out as masters of twin guitar West Coast barroom boogie and achieved local popularity before signing with Warner Brothers Records in 1970. A year later, the first Doobie Brothers album was issued. Their first hit was notched in summer 1972 when Listen to the Music, which we are hearing in the background, hit number 11 on the American Singles Charts. Other hits followed, fueled by the memorable, catchy guitars of Tom Johnston and Patrick Simmons, including Long Train Runnin' and China Grove. It was a distinct sound compared by some to the Allman Brothers without the heavier blues aspects, perhaps. Then, in the mid-70s, the Doobie Brothers' sound changed dramatically. That is part of tonight's story. What we're really focusing on is the person behind that change. Our guest for the evening is Ben Upham of Spokane, and he will fill us in on the early days of the Doobie Brothers and specifically guitarist and frequent songwriter Tom Johnston. First of all, Ben, welcome. Thank you, John. Good to be here. And uh, I'll just throw you an open-ended question. Tell us more about Tom Johnston and his role in the Doobie Brothers. Well, I think the main reason I chose Tom Johnston for the show was because the band started with him as their key figure, the heart of the band. They went on to great success in a very short time. Uh, For a matter of about three years, they were putting out mega hits, selling out concert tours, and then Tom got terribly ill. Um, Instead of stopping and waiting for him to recuperate, the band brought on Michael McDonald and Jeff Baxter and changed their sound, and I wish they had changed their name. But they did. No, they didn't. They went on and had a... A long period from, say, 1976 to 1986, a whole decade of uh, very good-selling records and big hits, but it didn't sound like the Doobie Brothers as far as I was concerned. The early version, or like we're hearing in the background. Yeah. Right. Now, Tom Johnson, was he a a Bay Area guy or from uh, where exactly? He was from San Jose. Okay. And uh, the band started in San Jose, and then they were, early on, they played in Santa Cruz quite a bit at Biker bars mainly that's how they started when they were pud oh okay and then uh, they played uh, some at i imagine some of the legendary uh, concert halls well you know they didn't really start uh coming on big until 1972 so i mean winterland yes you know things like that but the earlier the avalon things like that uh that was before them so okay the fillmore was gone by then correct right okay well, uh, what's co- your game plan for tonight? What are we going to be hearing to really get us started? And uh, again, these will be songs that Tom Johnston wrote primarily? Yeah, strictly. Every song you're going to hear tonight uh, is a Tom Johnston composition. Um, for the first set, I've chosen some uh, non-hits from the classic Doobie Brothers lineup uh, from 1972 to 75. Um, we're going to open up with Snake Man off of the Toulouse Street album, which is their second record. Um, Then we're going to go on to a nice tune called Spirit, which is off the What Were Once Vices or Now Habits album, uh, released in 74. Uh, We'll move on to a cut from The Captain and Me called Ukiah, which is the name of a nice town in Northern California. Uh And we'll finish up the first set with a track off the final album of the early Doobie Brothers that Tom played a major role in, which was called Stampede in 1975, and the track will be called uh, Texas Lullaby. Now, although I said uh, they were dual guitarists in the band, he and Patrick Simmons, you pointed out that Tom was the lead for this early material, right? All the the leads are Tom, yet there are twin guitar parts where uh, Simmons is playing along with him, Uh, similar, like you said, to the Allman Brothers. Okay, and again, these are some of the more overlooked album cuts from the early days featuring Tom Johnston, writer, lead guitarist with the Doobie Brothers. Lord, I'm worried Snake man's on the 
trail And I only come outside A black eagle flies through my backyard. A black eagle flies through my backyard. Perches on my window.
time I said in the summertime When the heat is burning down I'm watching the golden crops in the field Just grow without a sound I was a boy raised in the country It's still a part of me You see, no matter where I go It's a beautiful memory Rise with the sun At the break of day
And in the background, one of the great crunchy guitar radio riffs of the early 70s when you're cruising around in your automobile with the AM radio tuned in. China Grove, of course, that goes right along with a Smoke in the Water, I guess, another famous classic guitar crunchy riff. Right, Ben Upham? Powerful rock, and Tom Johnson stamped all over it. His guitar sound and his vocals. This is Tom. So tonight our guest is Ben Upham of Spokane. We are surveying the music of Tom Johnston with the Doobie Brothers, and we uh, we just heard uh, four selections of Off Doobie's album, some of the lesser-known material with Tom Johnston uh, having written the material and played the guitar on it and uh, taken lead vocals on all those, right, Ben? That's correct, John. Okay. So we're taking kind of a a chronological approach, I guess, tonight. Uh, Where are we going next with this? Yeah, that's correct. Um... After the last song that we heard, the Texas Lullaby, um, Tom had some serious health problems in the spring of 75. He had <clears throat> he had ulcers and pancreatitis, a uh, very severe case, um, and was unable to continue performing. So instead of the band stopping the tour, they added some other members. They brought in Jeff Baxter and uh, Michael McDonald joined the band. Of course, uh, Jeff Baxter formerly of Steely Down and a fantastic studio player. Right. Well, the band was still, you know, a really good band and they were still playing most most of the songs Tom had written, but the next studio records that came out and for the next ten years uh, did not sound like the Doobie Brothers to me. It was a very soulful, mellow, um, hit-oriented uh, pop sound. Not not your personal preference, then, I take it. They didn't rock, John. Okay, I know you better than that. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, as soon as Tom got better and was healed, um, instead of you know going back to the Doobies, he uh, set out on a solo career in 1979. And the next set that we're going to hear will feature uh, one track from his first solo album uh, called Outlaw, and then the far superior solo album, which came out in 1981, called Still Feels Good. Uh, We're going to hear Last Desperado and Madman from that. So I guess to get back to a point here, when uh, a lot of people think of the Doobie Brothers, uh, Michael McDonald going Saturday Night Live singing What a Fool Believes, or one of their big hits. That's not the Doobie Brothers you think of when you think of the Doobie Brothers, right? That's right, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to have this uh, sh- this on the air. Is It's like a, a grudge I have <laughs> against what the band became that they actually continued to call themselves the Doobie Brothers. Yeah? It just didn't have... It was like, you know, they'd done a heart transplant but forgot to put the new heart in. Like uh, the Beatles going on without uh, Paul or John Lennon. Exactly. It, they yeah. couldn't have done it. They yeah. shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done it. Right. So again, we're going to be getting into uh, some Tom Johnson solo material next, right? Yes, we are. And these were two albums, and uh, again, the time frame of those? 1979 and 1981. And uh, were any of the Doobies helping them out uh, as backup performers, or how did the relations go with the rest of his old band at this point. I think Pat Simmons was on one track on the second album, but pretty much it was Tom's new solo band. He had Greg Douglas with him. Oh, yeah. Good guitar player who was with Hot Tuna for a while. and Played um, the John Cipollina. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Well, a uh, little bit more of one of their hits in the background, but let's hear some Tom Johnston solo material without the doobies before he rejoin them a little bit later. And uh, as we continue our story of Tom Johnston with our special guest, Ben Upham.
is that classic Doobie Brothers guitar sound and vocal. Thanks to Tom Johnson, our special guest for the evening on Johnson's Improbable History Pop, is Ben Upham of Spokane. And uh, Ben, we just heard three songs from the Tom Johnston solo albums, early 80s. A bit more of a hard-rocking, uh, more of a slashing guitar sound, I guess, from Tom on his solo material in the early 80s. And he displayed the 70s with the Doobie Brothers, at least my, uh, my opinion. Well, those happen to be the tracks that I selected here. There's actually quite a variety. Um, the first album, as I was telling you, there's almost a bit of disco tinge on a few songs, which I shied away from. And on the second record, there is some acoustic stuff. So there's quite a bit of variety, actually. Yeah. Well, those were the 70s, and uh, you had to do what you had to do to try to get a hit record. Yeah, he uh, Tom was opening for Kenny Loggins here in Spokane in the Opera House. Some of you may have remembered back in... Uh, spring of 1980. Okay. You know, other uh, performers you've brought to us in the past, we've heard music of uh, Matt Gaydon, Toy Caldwell, and Miller Anderson, I'm thinking of three particularly, who kind of fall in the same category maybe as Tom Johnston, uh, maybe overlooked guitar hero songwriters who operated a lot behind the scenes without, without a lot of the big publicity, but have made a significant contribution over a long period of time. Would you put kind of Tom in that same category? I think it's a huge contribution, and I think um, if you look at it in retrospect, he has now been putting out this high-quality music for actually 32 years, and uh, the hits didn't stop, as you'll see in our next set. And uh, again, our next set, let's put this into uh, time frame. When, uh, w when was this material recorded and uh, who with? Well, this is the reunited original Doobie Brothers. Um, they reunited in 1988 uh, and were touring live, and they released their, their first uh, album in 1989 called Cycles. Uh, we're going to play The Doctor off of that, which you may recognize. It made a pretty big hit. Um, after that, we're going to go to the 1991 album Brotherhood for a song called Rollin' On, which I actually heard playing in Albertsons the other day. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, we'll follow that up with uh, the newest Doobie Brothers offering, which is called Sibling Rivalry. It was released on the Rhino label in the year 2000, and you're going to hear the opening cut, uh, Tom Johnson penned uh, People Gotta Love Again. Now, again, Tom Johnston came back to the band, and you mentioned that uh, off mic that Michael McDonald left. Was that a coincidence or not? You know, I don't know the circumstances, but I think in order for Tom to come back, he was going to have to be able to have a rock band, not a pop band. Okay, but things kind of changed, and uh, you've got some facts and data as to percentage of songs that uh, Tom Johnston wrote. Will you share that with us a little bit later, maybe? I'd be happy uh, to. Uh, in the first Doobies period versus the second Doobies period, we can uh, kind of explore that, because the numbers speak for themselves, I guarantee it. But right now, let's hear Tom Johnston with the uh, reunited Doobie Brothers, back in the band starting in the uh, late 80s. <laughs>
Well, we had to get in a little bit more of another classic Doobie Brothers guitar riff that saturated AM radio and FM at the time in the 70s. It was inescapable and also extremely enjoyable each and every time. So we just heard, and uh, Ben, you were pointing out off mic, how Tom Johnston's voice has changed very little over the last 30 years. We just heard most uh, recently uh, something from the most recent 2000 LP, right? Right, and I, my feeling is, yeah, he's taken very good care of his vocal cords. Uh, sounds every bit as good. And seems to be in good health these days, after the problems in the 70s. He looks real happy. I've seen some video footage of him, and he looks uh, healthy and happy and sounds great. And the band is still touring. Yeah, they played, uh, I think, Puyallup Fair about a year ago was the closest they came to here. But as far as I know, yeah, they're still doing pretty regular touring. And so there's no reason why we would not expect maybe another Doobie Brothers new release uh, in the foreseeable future. I would certainly hope so. They waited nine years between uh, brotherhood and sibling rivalry. I hope they don't wait that long this time. Well, what is it you have coming up next? You mentioned this will be the rarity for the evening. Yeah, I dug deep into the vaults. Um, The Doobies have released a few live things uh, over their career, but nothing that spans back to the early period uh, when Tom was in the band in the early 70s. And what I have here is a real gem from a show they did in New York in 1973 on the Captain and Me tour. Uh, track is called Without You. It's off the Captain and Me album. And again, uh, that's Tom taking all the solos. Oh, yeah, Tom's taking all the solos, and this is a a great version. If you know the song, you're going to love it. Uh, Actually, we talked a little bit about the statistics uh, beforehand, and I think you said that in the first stint with the band, Tom Johnston did the vast majority of the uh, songwriting. Uh, What were the actual numbers on that? Well, you know, I did add that up, John. Um, Between 1970 and 1975, the band released uh, 63 songs, of which Tom wrote 37 of those, which is a walloping 59%. Um, The second version of the Doobie Brothers um, with Johnston from 1989 to the year 2000 uh, released 33 songs, of which Tom wrote 10, so that's 30%. So he was about twice as active for the earlier band. So uh, I get the feeling, Ben, that you'd like to see those numbers revised a bit and maybe get back to that original 59% figure, right? I wouldn't even mind seeing some more Tom Johnson solo albums coming out. Yeah, well, who who knows? Sounds like he's in good health, so that's always a possibility. Okay, well, let's get again to the uh, live Doobie Brothers from again. What was the year on this? This is from 1973. It's called Without You. Fantastic.
unfortunately, Ben Upham, we are going to have to bail out a bit early on our rarity, and it indeed is a cooking live. Grateful, uh, we're grateful for it. Doobie Brothers from '73. Thanks for bringing that in. You bet, John. It's my pleasure. Glad to share it. And thanks for the show, especially. And uh, hopefully we've given Tom Johnston his props tonight. Well, I just want people around here to listen to the music. Turn it up. Very good. Thanks again. And uh, we'll get you back again here with uh, maybe another uh, another overlooked figure in the annals. You know I'd love to do that. Okay. <laughs> Next week on Johnson's Improbable History of Pop, live in the studio, The Working Spliffs, featuring Steve Jackson, Lori Jackson, Brian Flick, and others. Fantastic live music next week as part of our special KBBX fundraising drive. The Working Spliffs, live next week on Johnson's Improbable History of Pop. This is John Johnson for KPBX-FM. Many thanks for listening.